Hey guys, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. You may notice here that we have a new floor, and this gives us a really, really nice run speed bonus from this light concrete. I'm not sure if we're going to keep this visible or cover over it, but as you can see, we don't have it all the way through the base yet. So to make any more of this concrete, we need stone dust, quartz sand, clay dust, and calcite. And to get any more calcite, we need to farm a lapis vein, so we're in the twilight forest here. We're going to place our combustion generator, our miner, Give this some fuel, pick up the output chest, and fill her with mining pipes. Oh, and set the item auto output on this. Yeah, look at that, already the first pieces of calcite coming up here. We'll check back on that thing later in the episode. So just a quick recap on the changes since last episode. We now have an MV bending machine. That allowed us to craft a void upgrade for this sapling drawer to always ensure that we have logs in here so that we can fill our coke ovens. And with such an abundance of fuel, I decided to craft our second large bronze boiler. We now are capable of producing 32,000 millibuckets of steam per tick. Although, as you can see here, the effects of pollution are getting really, really bad. <laughs> Especially now that I've added another two blast furnaces onto the back of this thing. So we now have doubled once again our steel production. We now have four of these things producing our steel all the time. So during our live stream, we decided to invest a little bit into crops. It's about a 30 second journey through the portal in the nether, where we can get to, well, the middle of nowhere here. <laughs> but the reason we are here is for crops. Let's actually remove the weeds here. We definitely don't want weeds. So the reason we're in this biome is to get these biome specific buffs for our IC2 crops. And I mentioned a couple of episodes ago about the importance of stick reed. Well, it only took us about an hour on stream. Oh, <gasps> what? We just won the lottery. So yeah, we're now producing our stick reed. I am trying to increase the stats on these things, although this is a very, very time consuming process. We also now have the scanner here, and we got lucky and got another one of these solar panels to power this thing. Looks like this one is 133. That's not great to be honest, but yeah, it's gonna take some time before we can get really good stats on these things. And since we don't have the automation capabilities to uh, prevent the weeds from growing, we basically have to be here to babysit this so that we don't destroy our whole crop field here. So we'll go more in depth on the IC2 crops at a later stage, but that's going to be a little side project I'll be working on throughout the next few episodes, I think. There is a lot of possibilities with the IC2 crops. There's many, many resources we can get from them. Oh my goodness, that is why... <laughs> That could have been so much worse than what it was. So what I was going to say there was, our first goal for today is to be able to access some cheaper circuits. So currently we have 8 LVs we're working with, and I think actually, unless I've misplaced them, we are out of MV circuits. So to go about getting the cheaper circuits, we need to create some SMDs. We already have our polyethylene, we can create electrum and carbon we can get from ashes. Actually, no, carbon we have here in tiny piles that we're getting from our severely steam cracked light fuel. But we do first of all have to unlock this quest down on the bottom right hand side. And the thing we're gated by here is oxygen cells. We need to collect 91 of these. So just after I placed that miner, I kickstarted a bunch of silicon through our blast furnace. There are several different ways to get silicon. But during the stream, we put our miner on a talc vein that gave us a lot of talc dust, which we can use with some empty cells to give us four pieces of silicon, along with 12 cells of oxygen. So the oxygen has to go inside the input hatch of the blast furnace, but we can pick up enough for our quest here. The silicon will become important later for the first HV circuits, but there's a few things we need to do before that. So we got our oxygen quest, and it looks like, oh no, we're gated by the ethylene quest, and it wants us to make the advanced chemical reactor. Oh, and we're out of circuits for this. Oh no! <laughs> we're in a chicken and egg situation here. But we do have to unlock the quest, so I think what I'm going to do is batch a bunch of circuits. Not too many, since we want the cheaper recipe. But yeah, enough so that we can unlock this quest. We already have the ethylene and polyethylene fully automated here. And then we can see about making these SMDs and batch crafting a lot more circuits for what we have planned today. So I did say not too many circuits, but I went uh, with 72 LVs. We are currently crafting our MV circuits up here. 
The limiting factor in getting any more circuits at MV is actually these good circuit boards. So I was using this recipe here with the gold wire, but this is very expensive for a gold circuit board. But the alternative is to use sodium persulfate or iron 3 chloride. And both of those fluids down here we haven't looked at yet. But at least one of these is something we'll want to pick up fairly soon here. Okay, ultimately 23 MV circuits to work with. MV loot bag? Wow, that's some amazing loot bag rewards right there. And now that we have access to molten polyethylene, we can create machine hulls a lot cheaper like this. Well, it's not that much cheaper, but yeah, they're a bit easier to make in the assembler now. We don't have to worry about the raw iron plates. And there is our first MV chemical reactor. Four cells of ethylene. And the polyethylene quest now wants 41 cells of polyethylene. We have, what, 32 in this tank? Oh no, we have more than 32. Yeah, each cell holds less than 1,000 litres. So at this point, I picked up some of the fluids and items we made to complete some of our quests. So I decided to invest in some super tanks, which can hold up to 4 million litres. To craft one of these things, though, we do need pulsating iron, so I made some of that in the mixer, threw it through the blast furnace, and used four of the LV circuits we crafted earlier on. I moved some of this setup around so that we could fit a super tank in here for hydrogen gas, as I found that we were kind of backed up on this, and uh, this chemical reactor wasn't able to run. And the other one we have over next to our electrolyzer here for oxygen. Both of these gases we are getting as byproducts, but I really don't want to void them at this stage. We are going to need tons and tons of these later on. So next I wanted to get some more silicon. I realised that our LV electrolyzer, our electrolyzing redstone, was a bit slow, so I crafted up this MV version. The centrifuging of redstone also gives us mercury, so rather than storing it as fluid, we fluid solidify in this MV fluid solidifier, which gives us Thomcraft Quicksilver. And if we need the mercury in liquid form, we can fluid extract this later on. It's just easier to store the item than it is to store the fluid. And conveniently, the centrifuging of redstone also gives us a decent amount of pyrite, and ruby dust. We're going to need lots and lots of this ruby dust later on. But we do have quite a bit of silicon now backed up. There should also be some in the LV centrifuge through here. Oh, well, this chest is full, yeah. <laughs> Six dust. That's not great, but that takes us up to a stack here. So with our silicon now, we have it in dust form and in ingot form. Half a stack of silicon dust at a time, along with some gallium arsenide dust, is going to give us some monocrystalline silicon bulls. But these silicon bulls we can cut in the cutting machine. Oh, it gives us 16 wafers at a time. Nice. Huh. The quest wants us to make an advanced cutting machine. Okay, quest book, you win. <laughs> All we're missing for this recipe here is our diamond saw blade. I'm sure we have some more cobalt brass somewhere. Aha! We just have to make this into gears. And we can make our cutting machine. Okay, quest book, are you happy? <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. This side of the silicon questline ultimately is going to lead us into stainless steel, which is the gate into HV. It's similar to the aluminium for MV and steel to LV. So to etch the wafers that we have just created in the blast furnace, we need the precision laser engraver, which we already have crafted here. Guess we'll put the cutting machine next to this, and I think we should have some spare lubricant we, we can use for this thing. But to get the correct wafers, which we're going to need for the MV energy hatches, as to cook the stainless steel in our blast furnace, we have to upgrade the energy hatches on this thing from LV to MV, so that we can input 2 amps of MV and end up with HV power. So for that we need the ultra low power IC wafers, which means we need a green lens. Exquisite emerald? We may have another mining trip on our hands, <laughs> I don't know how we're looking for exquisites. Okay, it's not looking good, unless we can use olivine. You know what, we're going to do something a little bit sneaky here. First we're going to compress 9 emeralds into a block, cut the block into plates in the cutting machine. Oh right, of course, we have, <laughs> we have to block this in. And now we can lay the plates and it should give us the lens. Oh, it's an MV recipe. So this is chipping away at our aluminium supply here, we're going to have to find a way to get some more of this. But there we have it, the advanced lathe. Plug this into our MV line. Now we should be able to get our lens right. Oh, you know what? All of this ruby dust that we have here. We have two more stacks in the LV centrifuge. All of this we can start electrolyzing in the MV electrolyzer here. Oh, we're missing circuit one for this. And this will give us chrome, which is a very, very useful resource, along with some alumina dust. And the alumina along with our cryolite here, which we may have to top up here soon. These two things to the blast furnace should give us aluminium ingots. Yeah, that should top it up at least enough for today. But we do now have the green lens. We can laser engrave some of our wafers. Oh, this is such a cool machine. I love it. <laughs> we don't need too many of these, though. ULPIC wafers. These have to be put through the cotton machine, which is right here. So many steps for this, but <laughs> this is Greg Tech. Oh, look at this. It gives us the emerald lens. That's funny. <laughs> 
So yeah, this now leads us into the MV energy input hatches. Okay, everything here we have besides these voltage coils. Aluminium wire and steel rods. Mm, that's actually not too bad, as long as we have enough aluminium for this. Yeah, if I counted correctly, it's only a full stack of fine aluminium wire, which is only 8 aluminium ingots. Look at all this glorious silicon right here. <laughs> Oh, and look at all this chrome dust, that's going to be important later on today, actually. You know, now that I've placed this super tank of oxygen, I don't really know how we're going to move this thing, or what exactly we're going to do with it, but, I mean, I guess it's going to live there for now. We need our four cells of lubricant, which I'm going to steal out of the cutting machine here. Send the steel rods and the aluminium wire through the assembling machine, circuit one. Yeah, this is going pretty smoothly. It turns out we had all the rest of the materials. And there is our two MV energy input hatches. Yeah, look at all the quests we completed today. And we're gonna get quite a few loot bags out of this. Although this one, we will take the steel fluid pipes. The rest though, I think I'll grab the loot bags. Yeah, look at this, 12 MV loot bags. I think we'll save nine to trade for HV. A crop mushroom. Interesting, okay. <laughs> it looks like we didn't get much else though. Yeah, that's a sh yeah, we're definitely keeping these for HV. Aha, and this opens up our stainless steel here. So stainless steel dust is a mix between manganese, nickel, iron dust and chrome dust. Well, we have our chrome, hopefully enough of it. Yeah, the quest only calls for eight. We have around half a stack. The iron dust, I mean, we only have 85 ingots here, but we should have some ores unprocessed. I'm sure we can gather up enough iron for our needs. The nickel we also should have. Yeah, over two and a half stacks here. The manganese though is gonna be a problem. I don't think we have any manganese. So, we're going to take a trip back to the nether here, and what we're looking for is a grossular vein. As far as I know, we don't have one of those discovered yet. Um, yeah, this, this is going very smoothly. <laughs> I heard some stuff burn as well, I hope that wasn't our, uh, our gear. You know, I really should have brought a pickaxe with me, but I think we're just going to be a few blocks down here. Is it here? Ah, right here. Alright, let's find this ore vein we're after. I don't think we're missing anything here. Healing axe is the most important part. Not exactly what we're looking for here, but we did just come across a redstone vein. And as you can see here, we do have the ruby, which we can electrolyze into chrome for our stainless steel. And I think the nether version actually gives us a lot more redstone to work with than the overworld version. So this is somewhere we can definitely place our miner in the future. But yeah, we're still looking here for spisartine, pyrolusite, or tantalite ore. And I think they are at low Y levels. So I'm going to keep searching here, see what we can get. Oh wow, it took us like an hour and a half, but look what we found. <laughs> we got our Spessartine ore here. Oh, we're actually not too far from the portal here. But yeah, check out all these ores I found. I ended up tunneling through all of this stuff. Alright, we're going to make a tunnel back to the portal here. We're only 190 blocks away. And it's been around 6 or 7 hours since the start of this episode, where we placed the miner. Oh, there's so many mobs greeting us here. Look at this. <laughs> so many infernals. Yeah, I'm hoping that this miner is done. If I can stop being poisoned. Oh yeah, look at all those ores. Oh, that is a sight to see, look at that. Only two stacks of calcite though. That's a little less than I would have thought. Some crushed ore. Okay, either way, we're gonna reclaim the fuel out of our combustion generator. And this is probably gonna require a few trips back. Yeah, we were able to transfer everything over in two trips. We're gonna start processing all of this calcite for later on. More random explosions. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, there's been a few of those today, and I really can't tell where they're coming from. Well anyway, this tunnel down here should lead us straight to the ore vein we want. It's not exactly the most straight path, but <laughs> it'll take us there. We've got a little winding road to go down. Yes, we have arrived back here, but it seems that... You see that all of this is basically underneath some lava? Pretty much everywhere we dig, so I'm gonna have to try to get to the top of this vein. Somewhere central that we can place our miner for this thing. Yeah, so it turns out that this is what is above the ore vein. I'm not sure if the miner can go through lava, to be honest. Okay, we're actually above the lava source here. It's just a couple of blocks below us. We got our miner placed. Let's find out if this actually works through the lava. I mean, it seems to be picking up ores for us. Oh, we got some real gar, that's nice. The grossular, yeah. Spessartine, this is what we're after. All right, well, it seems to work. We're going to let that miner do its thing for a while. In the meantime, let's start to prepare the rest of the materials for stainless steel. So I managed to find all this magnetite, which was uh, mixed in amongst our chests and some of the output chests from the centrifuge. And we'll also get some of the excess ruby that we have lying in our chests. Yeah, we've actually got quite a lot of ruby backed up here, which is going to turn into a bit of chrome for us. To be able to mix the stainless steel dust, we do need at least an MV mixer. So I've gathered the materials here for our MV mixer. 
And we'll just put this here for the time being. Almost 800 steel now. Yeah, those extra blast furnaces were definitely worth the investment. Alright guys, so we are back. I have been doing some work here trying to get us prepared to make some stainless steel. The first thing I did here was replace the blast furnace energy hatches with the MV versions. And I crafted up four more steam turbines. We're still going to use the steam for this blast furnace for now. But hopefully this will be the last of the steam turbines we build. We, are, we will be switching out to, I think diesel is going to be our plan. Although I was toying with the idea of benzene power. That I haven't decided on yet 100%. But yeah, since these are now MV turbines, I think these take 7,000 each. Per tick. So I replaced all of the potent pipes down here. This used to be one singular normal potent pipe. We now have the double large pipes here. And those all now have their own valves on the bottom of the tank. So we now effectively have an HV blast furnace. And I've been doing some testing with this. To smelt aluminum from cryolite and alumina dust. It only takes us 20 seconds now per aluminum piece. And the turbines here do seem to keep up. We seem to have enough throughput on these fluid pipes. Originally I just had the one large, but I had to split it up as uh, if we'd done more than one ingot, then this would eventually get to like 16,000. And sooner or later we would have run out of steam. But yeah, our blast furnace is ready for the stainless. I also just got done grabbing a bunch more clay, which we are going to turn it into clay dust. We need this for our quest here in MV. This also is going to give us a bunch of alumina. And we can also mix the clay dust into the concrete with the rest of our calcite, stone and quartz sand. But this first lot here, we're going to run through the electrolyzer. We'll have to get rid of this hydrogen. Yeah, we're backing up a significant amount of gas here. But again, I don't want to avoid it, is the problem. <laughs> so I took a little break. It's been a couple of hours. Let's see how our miner is doing for the last piece we need for the stainless mix. Oh, wow. Did it finish? Yeah, I guess it pulled the mining pipes out. So I guess we're finished here. If we want any more, we're going to have to find the second vein. Oh, look at all that spisartine. That is glorious. That's awesome. <laughs> But it is not one-to-one -one with the dust we need. Yeah, the electrolyzer recipe is 14 spisartine dust for 3 manganese. But if we crush this down and get, what, 2 crushed dust pair? That's still going to be way more than enough manganese for, for the time being anyway. We're not going to rush straight into HV. I'd just like to get a little bit of stainless steel to get us started. I believe also the pyrolusite can be turned into manganese. Alright, let me grab these ores and then we'll see what we can do about our stainless. So while we're waiting on some of the dust processing, let's have a look at the right hand side of our quest book here and try to unlock a way to get these plastic boards. I was originally going to do iron 3 chloride, but I think instead we're going to go for sodium bisulfate. For this we're going to need two chemical reactors. We'll just be doing this at LV I think. And we'll also need a distillery. So the idea with the sodium persulfate is it's going to allow us to create these plastic circuit boards. And we can also use it in the recipe for these good circuit boards instead of having to use all of this gold wire. So to do this, we're actually going to be using the hydrogen sulfide byproduct we get from this chemical reactor. That is going to go into a chemical reactor right here. We just have to find a way to hook this up. So I think what we're going to do is fluid pipe across the top. This is looking very spaghetti. I love it. <laughs> Give this a pump on the top of the tank. So that should be sending all the fluid into the chem reactor. And we have to mix this with water. We're going to get diluted sulfuric acid from this. So just for the time being, we have a temporary water tank here. Just on the other side of the wall. Oh, actually, we need one of these to be in tin cans. Yeah, instead of going straight into the chemical reactor from the top here, we're going to place a fluid canner. And I know you can use tanks here, but we had the spare already. Give this thing some power. And we actually had the four steam turbines off our blast furnace. We can actually just reuse these. We've got another battery buffer here for power. The fluid canner will output to the chemical reactor here as item form rather than liquid. In fact, we'll have to transport this into the fluid canner. And that means we can input the water from the bottom side. Awesome, this should give us diluted sulfuric acid. Yeah, and the cells we can actually just 
automatically output to the fluid canner again. And then from here we just have to send the fluid into a distillery. We'll need a pump for this since we're using the auto output feature to the top side. This will be distilled on circuit 1. And we are now producing sulfuric acid. So above the distillery here, I've added a little buffer tank for the sulfuric acid. We are going to want sulfuric acid for other things, so I wanted to leave space for us to have a little fluid pipe here. But some of the acid we want to send into another chemical reactor up here. So we have a pump on the top of the tank. And in this chemical reactor, we're going to create our sodium bisulfate dust, which requires salt. So right now, this is the only salt we have in, in this crusher right here. So we may have to go and grab some more, but from what I can see here, we don't need a ton of this. This should last us for a little while once it decides to crush it, rather than all of this bizarre time. Although I have been throwing this through here periodically, then running it through the MV centrifuge, which also gives us a chance at red garnet dust. And we can actually centrifuge this for a bunch more dusts here, including 8 spisartine. So we're going to end up with so much spisartine here, which we're then electrolyzing into manganese, silicon dioxide, and alumina dust. And in fact, we're already at 54 manganese. This is from about 7 or 8 stacks of spisartine. So really, the ratio is a lot better than what I thought. So we do have a little bit of salt here which we have processed, we can lock this in the drawer. We have a conveyor on the top of the chemical reactor to import the salt. Do we need a circuit for this? Yes we do, circuit 1, okay. Is this going to work? Do we have it plugged in? I bet that's what it is. <laughs> yep, we're missing our cable. There we go, now it's running, awesome. And this gives us sodium bisulfate dust, and a little bit of hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric we're just going to store, and we can use this for, I think, chlorine, which is going to be another useful fluid for us. But yeah, this sodium bisulfate we just have to send through an electrolyzer, and I think we can do this at LV. Where is our electrolyzer? There it is, over there. <laughs> we need to throw this through the electrolyzer with some empty cells. So yeah, this is all very manual, and it will be for a few more tiers. It may not even be necessary to have dedicated reactors for this, but it doesn't cost us a whole lot now for, for the LV stuff. But yeah, this gives us the liquid sodium persulfate, which I think is going to be our quest. MV loot bag. A book. Nice. <laughs> oh, no way. So the next quest is for the plastic circuit boards. We're going to hold off on these as this is for the HV circuits. And as I mentioned, we're not quite ready for HV. It's just that I would like to get a little bit of stainless. So speaking of stainless, we should have all of our materials ready by now. I started preparing these next to our mixer. The last part we were missing was our manganese, which we're now swimming in. So we got our manganese, we got our chrome, some nickel dust and iron dust. And we're off, we're making stainless, nice. We may need a bit more iron as it does cost 6 dust per recipe. Ah, look at this, our first pieces of stainless dust. Let's not get too impatient though, the quest calls for 72 in our hands at once. And then once we have the stainless, we just have to run this through the blast furnace. 480 EU a tick, which we should be able to handle now that we've upgraded. And just a little bit of oxygen, which we are also swimming in here. <laughs> yeah, this is part of the reason why I didn't want to avoid this gas. I didn't want to be in a situation where we had stainless, for example, and no oxygen to cook it with. So it has been some time, we have two stacks of stainless dust. Are you prepared for HV? Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> We're not really prepared for HV. There's two quests for us though. Make sure we got our oxygen in the input hatch, yes we do. And let's just do this with one at a time, I don't want to start voiding things in the blast furnace. Just to triple check that we can actually run this with these steam turbines. The fact that this doesn't start though is not filling me with a ton of confidence. <laughs> Maybe we just need a hammer. Oh, we're missing circuit 11. Is that what it is? Green lights. Nice. <laughs> okay, 60 seconds. Let's make sure we get enough steam in these things. They appear to be keeping up. How is our steam tank doing? Oh, that is draining really, really fast. Look at that thing. I mean, I guess both of our boilers are off, but they should turn on any second now. Yep, they just turned on right there. So now, are we gaining or are we losing steam? It's tough to call, honestly, but yeah, we can't rely on steam for much longer. And we do have to be careful when we're smelting stainless through this thing. Oh, the Quest one's 64, no way. <laughs> oh, that's going to take so long. You know what? We may actually just be neutral on steam. Look at this. It's like barely able to keep up here. Both boilers are on, and I suspect some of the buffers have now filled in these other machines. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that, I think. <laughs> But yeah, to unlock our HV tab, we do also need the advanced circuits down here. We may or may not get to this next episode. There is some more infrastructure I'd like to get at MV first before we dive into HV. Mainly a way to start processing all of this dust that we're getting. Especially now that we have the miner, I mean our chests are packed. <laughs> we have to get some of this processed. So I think that's our next order of business, as is to look at a way to automatically process ores. 
I know processing in Greg Tech is something very, very complex and is something we'll go through many iterations over the course of this pack. But yeah, with that, I think this is a good point to wrap things up. We now have our sodium persulfate, so we can create the LV and MV circuits a bit cheaper. And I guess technically we can make the resistors. So yeah, that should make the rest of the MV chapter go fairly smoothly here. I hope. But yeah, <laughs> that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.